Well, I'm Mr. Highland, and today I want to I want to talk to you. I love you guys, but I also love my God, and today I've been given the tremendous privilege to talk to you about why I believe the Bible is true, and I ask myself the question, why do I believe the Bible is true? Today, I would like for you to hold your modern minds open, regardless of what your hang-up has been in the past for some of you, some of you have had experiences, some of you may be involved in some things that acts as an obstacle preventing you from actually embracing the Word of God as truth. There are a lot of different ways that we can approach this subject. It's a huge topic, and I have for the last month been trying to compress it in, in almost like a, a large sheet of aluminum, just kind of compress it into a, a tight ball. And we're just going to take one slice, one aspect, uh, one answer. We can talk about philosophical proofs, and I can address theological proofs, and we can talk about the proof of fulfilled prophecy. I can even talk about personal experience. But today what I would like to do is I want to focus on one aspect. And here's how I would briefly answer this question. Why do I believe the Bible is true? I believe in the authority of the Word of God because I believe in the integrity of the men who copied it. And I believe in the integrity of the men who copied the Word of God because I believe in the accuracy of their copies. And I believe in the accuracy of their copies because I have seen the evidence of archaeology. Here's what we're going to do today. Today we're going to observe two archaeological ways to prove the authenticity of Scripture. So we're going to focus on archaeological evidence. And then I'll let you decide. Archaeological confirmation is divided into artifact evidence and documentary evidence. When you think of artifact evidence, artifact evidence is defined as artifacts of a previous society testifying directly of a biblical event. On the other hand, documentary evidence will be defined as extra biblical text or written documents that confirm Old Testament history directly or indirectly. And what I'd like to do, I'd like to uh, focus on the first archeological way to prove the authenticity of the Bible is documentary evidence or evidence of the Word. I've been meditating on this verse lately. It's Mark 13, 31. If you guys move to the next slide. This, this verse says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. This is a statement that Jesus made. I'm often confronted with people that will say, Jesus never claimed to be God. He did, if you read the New Testament, but... That aside, if you think about the statements that he made, he made some pretty bold statements. I said to my class the other day, if I got up and I said to you, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away, you would fall out of your chair. You would think, okay, Highland, maybe once every 30 days you say something of significance, but it's forgotten after that. Do you realize by saying, quoting Jesus today, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away, Today, this verse is fulfilled once again. Been preserved for uh, close to 2,000 years. Why is that? I think it has something to do with the seriousness with which the scribes take their jobs. Uh, the authority that they afford to the Word of God. I want to read to you the intricate system for transcribing synagogue scrolls. And this is by Samuel Davidson. This is in the book, The New Evidence That Demands a Verdict. I would encourage you guys to read it if you get a chance. But this is something that scribes would do. He describes some of the discipline of the Talmudists in regard to the scriptures. And this is what he says. A synagogue roll must be written on the skins of clean animals, prepared for the particular use of the synagogue by a Jew. These must be fastened together with strings taken from clean animals. Every skin must contain a certain number of columns equal throughout the entire codex. The length of each column must not extend over less than 48 or more than 60 lines. And the breadth must consist of 30 letters. The whole copy must be first line 
And if three words be written without a line, it is worthless. The ink should be black, neither red, green, or any other color, and be prepared according to a definite recipe. An authentic copy must be the exemplar from which the transcriber ought not in the least deviate. No word or letter, not even a yod, must be written from memory. Now I want to show you what a yod is, how small this, this letter is. Right now you're looking at uh, the third verse of Genesis. The third verse of Genesis says, Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. You would go to the next. That which you're looking at right, right there is the Hebrew word for be. Translated, let there be. God basically says, exist. So when you think of uh, chapter 1 and verse 3, Then God said, exist, light, and there was light. That's how powerful His word is. That's the small right there is the letter, uh, is Yod. It's the smallest letter in the Hebrew alphabet. It's about the size of our apostrophe. And according to these scribal rules, they could not copy that letter from memory, no matter how familiar they were with the Hebrew scriptures. It's not Yoda, but it sounds like Yoda. It's the letter Yod. All right, they couldn't copy that from memory. Let me continue reading here. No word or letter, not even a yod, that must be written from memory. The scribe not having looked at the codex before him. Between every consonant, the space of a hair or thread must intervene. Between every new uh, parasha or section, the breadth of nine consonants. Between every book, three lines. The fifth book of Moses must terminate exactly with a line, but the rest need not do so. Listen to this. Besides this, the copyist must sit in full Jewish dress. Wash his whole body, not begin to write the name of God with a pen newly dipped in ink, and should a king address him while writing that name, he must not take notice of him. That's incredible. I mean, they, they were serious about the word of God. If you had asked biblical scholars before the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, what would constitute his dream for a discovery in order to verify the reliability of the Old Testament, he or she would have said, older witnesses to the original Old Testament manuscripts. And what they're really asking is how accurate are the copies we have today compared to the copies of the first century and earlier? Uh, prior to the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, 